Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be doing something a bit different though. It's going to be a bit of a weird video. <laughs> With the Dolmenwood books now being released, the PDFs being released, and available to everybody, or to most people, the backers at least, um, and the rest of it all coming out soon, I thought I might do a little bit of a video where I go through different um, supplements, adventures, things like that, settings, that I think would be really, really good to combine with a Dolmenwood game or that you could read and use for inspiration for a Dolmenwood campaign, whatever. Like just stuff to add into the Dolmenwood world, things that have a similar vibe or a close vibe or a complementary vibe. It's things like Into the Weird and Wild, which by no means ha have a com it doesn't have a complete overlap with Dolmenwood. Don't, not at all. But there's a certain weirdness and whimsy in Dolmenwood that and, and a darkness at times that fits with some of the tone of this book. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I have reviews of almost every one of these books that I'm going to be going through. You guys can go back and check them out. But I just want to give you guys a reminder and basically my opinion on why I think each one would work. And there's a whole bunch. I mean, it's not just like six or seven. I'm going to include a whole bunch here. I could probably do this in two parts, but I'm just going to go through a little bit of each of these documents to give you guys that sense of, you know, here, this is why you should use this one. So if you didn't see my review of Into the Weird and Wild, you guys should check it out. But um, essentially, Into the Weird and Wild is a, not exactly a setting book, it's more of a set of resources for making forests and forest travel horrifying and scary and strange. Uh, there's a lot of locations and creatures and factions and ideas to put into a wilderness, a forest, um, and, and to make it darker, to make it more foreboding. Now, obviously, Dolmenwood has its own rules, its own creatures, its own tone, and so you wouldn't want to take everything from Into the Weird and Wild and just blend it right into Dolmenwood. But I think you could go through this book and take a lot out of it and, and add it into a, a Dolmenwood campaign. It would certainly make it darker, but you wouldn't have to, you know, abide by the just the darker side of things. Um, rules for exhaustion, rules for camping and surviving the night, which, you know, and again, the Dolmenwood setting has its own rules now, but you could mix things up and, and add in what you want. If you hunt, you can go hunting for creatures in here, and there's setbacks and, and boons, perhaps. Cleaning bodies and what you get from it, um, goods from it, and different moon phases, you could add those in, right? And so, again, you could have um, the Dolmenwood setting, or you could add all this stuff in. Lots of possible corruptions from staying too long in the wood, becoming lost, going mad. This book, by the way, if you guys have never seen my review, you need to do it. Um, because it's got a lot of cool stuff. The creatures, the Alloper, uh, the Arcanus Arachne, uh, the Bowick. And again, you could just add these creatures in, Blight Motes, into particular parts of Dolmenwood or particular things. Bramble Beast, Briar Scoffs, uh, the Cacophonous Crowman, right? I mean, so there's, this could be like the Gloams, <laughs> almost, from uh, the Cherubs, Children of the Woods. Anyway, you get the point. Lots and lots of cool things here that you can put into your game. And again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. This is 248 pages, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll ahead to um, the locations really quickly uh, because there's a whole bunch. There's also a bunch of spells in here. But then there's this, this way of thinking about the forest as a dungeon, which is really cool. And then there are locations within that quote-unquote dungeon that you could add in. And you could easily add them into hexes. First of all, there's a bunch of flora, um, diseases, hazards and traps, um, but then, oh, there's a good answer, it's the body table, <laughs> walk through the woods, uh, here we go, a hundred weird locations, you could easily take these, the bathing pools, the bowak hive, the bliss fields, cairn of the first hunters, the exiles camp, the deciduous growth, the dwelling of the scroll man, fruit trees of rotten truth, the fungal carpet, and you could add this in to any of the different uh, hexes in Dolmenwood, maybe if the players are passing through, but they're not going to the, the main thing in that hex. You add one of these into that hex if anything stands out to you. you fill up the least, the less interesting hexes, or swap out less interesting hexes in Dolmenwood with these. Anyway, I think you guys should check out Into the Weird and Wild. If you haven't already, I would consider running it alongside Dolmenwood, or at least think about mixing in some of these ideas. Okay, the next one I wanted to mention is Fungi of the Far Realms. This just recently was released. This is the second edition, I believe. The first one was out years ago. But this one is a 280-page book of random, weird, made-up fungi, which would fit perfectly for a Dolmenwood campaign, which already has a whole bunch of cool fungus and a whole bunch of cool fungi, I should say, and, and, and lots of different cool properties and things that each one is made of. This book is essentially just that, but 200 and some pages of... 
of, of that, 223 pages, just about 221 pages of fungi with pictures, illustrations, there's uh, D666 tables to find them randomly. And then I'm just going to skip forward. It's kind of also a cool book because you could give it to your players as an in-world artifact because it's written like in persona, a guy in the world. And so you could have the players actually get this book and then they would have that book, or at least you could copy out whole sections of it and give it to them that way. So here we go. The adversary, the agaric rex, the almost invisible trumpet, the eliambus, the ambush fungus, the angel's wing. This is a good one. I'm going to read this one. Uh, found. It's found in particular locations on this die drop table or a kind of a map that you could use as a die drop table, a hex map. Symbiotic relationship with Douglas fir, growing from the living bark of the tallest and most resplendent trees. That's its habitat. Its appearance is a lateral stem connected with a pointed cap. White with light gray scales. Wood cut from a tree with angels, wings, fungus growing on it is considered holy and is used to make altars and other religious paraphernalia. The flavor and mouthfeel is sweet and vanilla, and the aroma is similar and subtle. You have the ant fortress, the antipope, the aquatic chanterelle, the aurora bracket, the azuzu, the babel fruit. And this is a good one. Small bullet with a pump, a plump orange cap and a hearty stem. Not a fruit, obviously, but consuming this remarkable fungus enables the ingester to understand all languages for a short time. If one becomes too reliant on the babel fru fruit's translation power, the brain can permanently lose the ability to comprehend any languages without it. Its flavor is extremely spicy and it, the aroma is exotic spices. And it grows on cypresses or near cypresses. That is so cool. Right, so all of these, and again, there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these, and they grow in different weird places, and they have weird uh, habitats, and they have weird appearances, and they do weird things, and there's cool illustrations of them, and great descriptions. This is just a fantastic book. I'm so, so, so glad I got this, um, because it just helps you understand, I mean, you can just add these into any game but in particular you could add them into a dolman wood game and i think it would be ex just excellent and again just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things so good fungi of the farm realms highly recommend you guys check this book out and i highly recommend that if you're going to add a dolman wood campaign you get this and add them right in okay those are the two kind of very broad books there are uh, there are a bunch of a bunch more more particular books that I have um, a couple I would say locations maybe three locations that have a bunch of ideas in them that you would take for a for a Dolmenwood campaign you probably wouldn't take it whole cloth but you could the the next one would be the Yellow Book of Breckewald uh, which is sort of a it's a Lamentations of the Flame Princess adventure um, it's by Matt Strom and it's essentially just a wizard school. And the, the, this book is actually kind of cool. Questing Beast is a whole review on it. It's got a lot of, basically, like, there's a, it's kind of a game almost built in. You have, like, years, you, you, you take classes, and then there's this dungeon underneath the castle that you go. And there's actually a region around the castle as well that has stuff going on. And it's that stuff that you take it ideas from. It's sort of like, um, yeah, here's a, a little region. You could easily add Breckewald into a nearby Location, right? So you have Dolmenwood, and then a few miles away, you have the Breckewald region. Breck Breckewald, Breckewald, I can't say it. <laughs> Breckewald region. Um, with Lake Hart. And then you have this stuff going around here, and there's a, there's shrines, there's inns. Um, it's sort of fey. There's sort of, you know, it, it's a similar kind of world to the world of Dolmenwood, in that you have these sort of very prom prominent wizards and magic, and, and the shrines are places you go and visit and, and pray at, and there are, you know, just kind of a medieval analog. Really interesting. This one's more Arthurian, but the ideas here are excellent. And there's tons of creatures and magic items and hexes where, uh, now the artist is kind of, you know, it's all <laughs> definitely different than the Dolmenwood art, let's just say. Um, but it's great. You have great characters, great um, connections to things. You could, this would be a place where you come and, and uh, get, get quests from back in Dolmenwood, or maybe this is a place where other adventures are happening. Right? If, you want to, if you want a Dolmenwood to be part of a bigger region, this is another nearby region. And so you could have a couple nearby um, you know, interconnecting places. So if, if the, you know, I kind of think of it like if you're playing The Witcher, for example, and you play through the whole main game, then you get Blood and Wine. Uh, you go to uh, Tucson, is that what it is? I actually forget where you go, That's what it's called. But it's an entirely new region connected to the first, but entirely new and very related and, 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 and all that, but it's, 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 it's totally new. You could do something like that with this one, um, where you're going back and forth between the castle and the region around it, and then going back to Dolmenwood and things like that. So I highly recommend you guys check out uh, Questing Beast's review on this. I'll put a link below to it, The Yellow Book of Breckewald. It's a good one, and the, the adventure as a whole is 
is really cool, but it's a great tonal fit, I think, for Dolmenwood. The next one is something that I've recently reviewed, and that's the Sorcerer's Enclave. I'm not going to go through the whole thing again in detail, um, but you guys can check out the review that I just recently did on it. The art is brilliant, and it fits so well with a Dolmenwood campaign. Uh, the ideas here are really good. The kind of magic you're talking about would fit right into a Dolmenwood game. Maybe you have an a wizard's tower or a wizard school within Dolmenwood, you just put it in a hex and it's the Sorcerer's Enclave. Maybe it's in one of the cities, maybe it's just outside, um, you know, again, to the north, across the, the waste north of, of Dolmenwood, or whatever it is, you put it in the world and it's a place the players can go. Maybe there's reasons for them to go there. So similar to the Yellow Book of Breckelwald, you now have a sort of wizard's academy or wizard's school, wizard's, you know, um, <laughs> sanctum nearby in the world. I think that would be really, really cool. Okay, the next things that I have are basically just a bunch of adventures or ideas that connect. So the Forest of Doors, which is something that I've connected to before, I've talked about before. This is a great adventure. Essentially, it's more of an idea than a series of adventures. Uh, but the Forest of Doors is essentially this idea that it's a little bit like mirrors in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, how all of them connect. Well, the idea is there's this Forest of Doors. And uh, if you know the right spells, you know the right incantations, you can tap on the door and it'll open and you can go right in. That's a really cool idea, and you'll, you'll, be, you'll be in this series of rooms that all are different, and they're differently arranged, and you can find your way basically into any door anywhere in the world if you know the right path through the Forest of Doors, because it connects to every door. So it's a really cool idea. Um, I highly recommend you guys check out the Forest of Doors as well. There's the Horrendous Hounds of Hendenburg. I think this would be a great setting. Again, you put it into a nearby region. The Forest of Hendenburg um, is nearby. And, or rather the area around Hendenburg, the Cryptwood. You can put the Cryptwood in a nearby region, right? So you have, let's see if I can find a, a map of the, the hex map. Here you go. It's a pretty cool hex map. You could fit this into somewhere near Dolmenwood, right? Maybe to the west or to the south or to the east of Dolmenwood, there is the Cryptwood. And it's another nearby location. So if you, I mean, Dolmenwood, don't get me wrong, there's tons of stuff to do in Dolmenwood. And I don't recommend, by the way, that you take all of these things that I'm suggesting and cram them all into the world. You could. <laughs> I probably will, because <laughs> I'm crazy like that. But but what I would suggest is taking the ones that interest you, and, and these are all tonal fits, I think, to the Dolman World world. Or at least they are close enough that a little bit of adaptation would get you into the Dolman Wood world. And so I think the Cryptwood, the Horrendous Hounds of Hendenburg, is a great one. And then again, tonal fit, you put it into the world nearby somewhere, and it's right there. The Black Worm of Brandonsford, another great example. Um, this one is just, I mean, I think, asking to be connected to Dolmenwood. And it's what I like about it is that the names of things are pretty generic, but you're dealing with things like the Fae, giants, witches, goblins, dragons, dwarves. I mean, it's 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 within the Dolmenwood uh, milieu, if you will. Uh, you put it nearby, maybe it's just a town on the very edge of Dolmenwood. Maybe you rework the map a little bit and add Brandonsford in somewhere nearby. Um, in my mind, I have this sort of region that's being developed with all of these different towns and forests and fey connections, and and uh, and it's actually and I'm, I'm mixing up some of them together into the same maps in my mind, and I think I'm going to do that. Dolmenwood, I think I'll leave the same, but I'll put a nearby region, maybe just the south of Dolmenwood or to the west of Dolmenwood, with with a bunch of these towns and forests and mountains and things, and and you'll have a slightly different world. But anyway, I think this is a great one to connect. A lot of people know this one anyway, a lot of people like this one anyway, and I think it would fit really, really easily in tone with Dolmenwood. Nightmare over Ragged Hollow. This one's also very good. Maybe a little bit less of a tonal fit, but what you're doing in the forest in the surrounding region around Ragged Hollow, in the hexes around it, is very, very good. And again, you guys, I've reviewed this, so I'm not going to go through here again in detail. But the Nightmare over Ragged Hollow would be a great connection. I'm just clicking ahead to the to the hexes, basically. The Gloamwood. Yeah, the Gloamwood, you're dealing with goblin a goblin market, you're dealing with, you know, foresters, trolls under bridges, <laughs> weird things happening in the forest. Um, the goblin market is what draws my mind there, <laughs> of course. And um, it's just a great setting. It would work really, really well with a nearby region. You put in uh, Nightmare of Ragged Hollow and the players can go back to Ragged Hollow. Maybe they start there, maybe they, maybe it's just a region that's nearby, and if the players hear rumors about it, they want to go that way, right? The idea, I don't tend to lock players into a region. I tend to provide a region and lots of stuff to do, but if, but if they're really interested in leaving, I don't say, well, guys, we're, we're kind of playing in Dolmenwood. You got to go back to Dolmenwood. I try to open things up. So if players are like, yeah, we started as a Dolmenwood campaign, but now we're going over to Ragged Hollow. Okay, great. 
I open that up. So that's that's kind of how I run games. So I tend to think of the surrounding region, and I and I and that's why I like seeding pre-made adventures in all those places because that's way that way if the players do go to those places, I have fun, you know, fitting the puzzle pieces together initially and saying, oh yeah, Night Ragged Hall will be over here. Oh yeah, Branded Sphere will be over there. Oh yeah, Brecka Wall will be over here. And then when the players then go that direction or find the rumor that leads them there, I don't have to scramble and do a bunch of work and say, okay, how does this fit? I've done the initial groundwork and then I have all of these books laid out so I don't have to worry about going back through. In that same vein, you have the house under the moon dial, which is basically a perfect tonal fit as far as I can tell for uh, for Dolmenwood. You have a, a town in a region which is being attacked by sort of inquisitorial churchmen, but they're not actually churchmen, or they're not the good churchmen. They're uh, a guy who's been excommunicated, but he's gathered these, you know, um, band of brigands around him, and he's determined to enforce his version of the church. But you also have a door into fairy, and fairy is very much dangerous. They're very much the sorts of fairies you're dealing with. They're not good fairies. They're not nice fairies. And the, the art fits perfectly in terms of tone. The, I don't know. It's just, it seems like it's a really, really good connection in my mind. Plus, it's a great adventure. It seems like it's really fun and it's really um, open and it has a lot of really good layout choices. And it's a great adventure on its own, right? You guys can check out the uh, adventure review I did. But I think it works really, really well. The next two probably won't surprise anybody. The Hole in the Oak and the Incandescent Grottoes, both by Gavin Norman, both for Old School Essentials, both dungeon crawls that are very, very kind of localized, but the ideas here, again, are very, very good. You have fawns, you have gnomes, you have um, weird creatures, troglodytes, ghouls, spiders, um, but it's all within that realm of whimsy and ridiculousness. Yes, you have an ooze cult, but that makes sense. You could do that easily in a Dolmenwood game. Um, you have undead, but there's tons of undead in Dolmenwood you could add in. So I think it works really, really, really well. And the same thing is true for the next one, which is the Barrow of the Bone Blackguards, which is the, I think, first adventure, Adventure by Chance Dudenak, um, who did the Black Worm and Brandisword. Um, it's the first adventure in the, I think it's the, what is it, the second? Yeah, the second adventure anthology for Old School Essentials. The Barrow of the Bone Blackguards. Again, I've, I've gone through it before, so I won't go through it here again, but it's just so good. And it fits very, very well. You've got a fairy who's been, um, you know, ticked off. <laughs> You've got a, a barrow which has been taken over by these funny undead bandits. Um, You've got just, it's just a, it's a really delightful adventure. And I think it would work really, really, really well with all of that. Okay, here are a few more. Because <laughs> as you said, as I said, this is a lot and I'm not going to... I'm not going to do another video, another video, so I'm just going to go through a bunch of these. The Black Apple Brew, I think this is a great one. The Black Apple Brew is one that I've reviewed a while back. Um, it's a really, really good adventure. It's fey. It's got lots of stuff going on. It is really, really good. I've, again, reviewed it before, but I think the tonal fit is just perfect. I, I'm almost surprised it's not even in Dolmenwood. I mean, it's like, it just feels like it is in Dolmenwood to, in my mind. So the Black Apple Brew, again, I hope you guys check it out. Um, it's got were pigs, which is great. Um, it's got different ways of entering it, different another elf, elfin dimension, and uh, the, you know the fae fairy. And so that's that's really really cool. I like that the idea of going back and forth between fairy. Um, in Dolmenwood, there are a few ideas, a few places where you can do it, but the surrounding region should have you know connections to the fairy too. It shouldn't just be Dolmenwood, and I think this would be another way of doing that. Um, okay, the ancient brew elf, he's great. The next we have is The Nightmare's Rain, which is by Nashcraft. I've reviewed this one too. Now, this one essentially takes place inside a dream, but there's a hag and there's a nightmare, and it it would fit really anywhere, right? You could put this you could put this adventure into any of the towns in Dolmen. Would you just add this little girl who has had this um, nightmare? And then you have a very, you know, going into her dream sort of adventure. Um, it says it's set in the Bogwood Forest, which actually fits with one of the other ones coming up. <laughs> but I think it would be really, really great just to um, put this anywhere in Dolmenwood. And again, I've talked about this adventure and what I would do to change it to make it a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit better. It's a good adventure as is. There's a couple things I think that you could do to make it excellent. So I would change, make those changes. Again, you can watch my review of this. And then, um, and then you go through and just uh, add this into anywhere in Dolmenwood any of the towns, and especially if the players have been spending a lot of time in one of the towns, and, if, and you, you add this little girl, Charlin, as a, or Charlene, I think it's Charlie, Charlin. Anyway, uh, you, you, she's a, you know, a friend 
of the players. They've been helping. She's been helping them. She's been doing things, and suddenly she goes into this deep dream-like state, and it's up to you to figure out what's going on. You can easily do that. So I think that's really good. The next two uh, uh, are kind of more just like tonal things you could add in. This is the Puppet Hen's Guide to the Rainy City. Um, puppetry, which is a vile art, but you could add puppetry into like, you know, if they go to the castle town, maybe there's like a, a, a fad of puppetry there and you have a whole bunch of puppets. I don't know. Anyway, it fits with the Dolmenwood idea, right? That there's this strange puppet fascination going on in the town and you have a whole bunch of them, famous puppets. People could talk about it. It could be a whole adventure, a whole thing. And again, the tonal fit seems perfect. So I think Puppet Hen's Guide to the Rainy City, really, really good. And the same thing is true with The Restless Dead, true tales of ghasts and geists in the Rainy City. I apologize for the weird color thing at the top. This is the edition I got, and I, uh, the PDF, and I, I don't know why exactly, but this is the PDF that I got when I got this. Um, so The Restless Dead, you have a whole bunch of very interesting um, stories about ghosts, basically kinds of ghosts, um, particular ghosts who have done things, uh, haunts in various parts of the world, and you could just add them in as the haunting in this town or in this house or in this region, right? And so you have a whole bunch of creepy ghost stories, ghosts that you could add into your game. And again, the tone is pretty perfect. That's why I like it. The tone is, is right on. Okay, still have a bunch to go, guys. <laughs> like I said, um, this is a, a, gonna probably be a normal length video, but I'm just going through a bunch of these things that I think are connected. Rackham Vale, of course. Now, I actually have my issues with Rackham Vale. I reviewed it and I, I talked about them there. So I'm not going to go into them in too much detail here, but it would be a mistake not to look at Rackham Vale and look at all of the ideas for monsters and locations and all of those things where creatures are brought in. I think it's a, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of good tonal fits here. Um, especially with the creatures. I think you go through the monster manual and add them all in to Dolmenwood, basically. All of them, <laughs> and as far as I can tell. And then you go through the hexes and some of the other appendices and see what would see what you like, basically magic items especially. But uh, but when it comes to the bestiary, which is a good 100 and, well, almost 100 pages in this book, um, that's, that's what I think this book does really, really well. And what I would add in to Dolmenwood is the monster manual from Rackham Vale and the art as an inspiration to... You could add Rackham Vale as a region nearby. You can easily do that. Um, I think a lot of people will, actually, if you have both Dolmenwood and Rackham Vale, but I'm not going to. I'm not a huge fan of the Rackham Vale locations. I think they're just not done the way that I kind of like. I don't, I don't think the tone fits the, the, the art and the creatures so well. I think the sorts of adventures that are happening are actually not, not actually, it doesn't all work together. But there's a lot of great, great, great ideas. And so I highly recommend you guys check them out. Mercury Poison, for example. <laughs> that's a great thing to look at. Um, that's a beautiful piece of art. Beautiful piece. Arthur Rackham is one of my favorites in terms of his art. He's not my only favorite, though, and I think you'll see that there's another book in here that uses another artist from this period. Great ideas as well. Okay, the next one is Castles and Tillin. This is one that I would pretty much just put into the world as a location. Again, is it perfect in terms of its tone? No, because there's not really fairies here. But Castles and Tillin is a great, you might say, human side of Dolmenwood. The sorts of magic you deal with, the sorts of creatures you're dealing with, the sorts of funny humor you're dealing with. You could add the Malavols in as a family nearby. Maybe there's a noble family. Maybe maybe instead of um, Chamrose, the nearby city, not not nearby town, but the nearby city is um, is uh, the capital and you go out into the woods or you go out into the mountains to the northeast or something like that and you end up at Castles and Tillin. So you add a mega dungeon into the region. Some people have talked about adding um, Barrow Maze into the Dolmenwood campaign. I think actually a lot of people have. Uh, that's kind of, it seems like a lot of people have made that connection. I'm not sure exactly why. I wouldn't put Barrow Maze, I'd put Castles and Tillin. Now, players might just get hooked into the Castles and Tillin campaign. I'd be fine with that because I love Castles and Tillin. But you could easily put this in. And I think it's a great tonal fit. It's not fairy. But if the players want to break from fairy and they want to move into more undead with the same sort of whimsy and humor and magic item ridiculousness and all of that, I think Zintillin would work great. Okay, one more kind of setting that I think would be great to have, and that is Tiny Fables. This is from Mouse Ritter, but the ideas in this book are great. Really, really good. And it's fairies. There's lots of fairies going on here. I've talked about this one before. And again, you'd have to adjust it from the sort of cutesy... Um, uh, Mouse Ritter, tone. <laughs> but I think there are still a lot of great ideas within this. Things like, for example, Mab the Shadow Thief. Such a great little fairy creature. Creepy, 
and awesome, uses scissors to cut off people's shadows and turns them into their own servants. And that's a great idea. Uh, and there's a lot of things like that in this book. So I would, I would recommend checking out, um, checking out Tiny Fables. One of the things that could happen, maybe, maybe, somewhere in Dolmenwood, the players get shrunk down to the size of mice. And suddenly they find that there's an entire world of talking mice down here, and there's an entire world of tiny fairies, and there's an entire world of, you know, all these things happening down on the level of, of, of mice. So maybe there's a hex in your world that is just um, this whole hex. The Forest of Pwill is actually one hex, and those mountains are actually just, you know, rather large hills. Right? You could do something like that, where the entire, the entire, this entire map is one little hex on Dolmenwood, or just outside Dolmenwood, or something like that. You could do that, and it would be, I think, fairly easy. So, I highly recommend checking out Tiny Fables, and considering adding it in. Okay, still going through a whole bunch here, guys, but we're getting close, I promise. <laughs> the Chamberlain's Chessboard, I've talked about it multiple times now. I think it's a perfect tonal fit. I'm adding this into my Dolmenwood world um, right away. Maybe the players will even start here. But with the idea of the chess game, the, 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 the idea of these chess pieces that are going around and talking, it seems like it's a perfect fit for Dolmenwood. The kind of people you're dealing with here, the creatures that you're running into, you can easily put them into the world. Great idea. I think I might make the Skenmore Scuttlers like a bigger bandit group, maybe even uh, connecting them to the Hounds of Hendenburg. Maybe they're the same bandits that have um, that are Sly George in, in the Hounds of Hendenburg are dealing with. You know, this particular offshoot of them are led by Abigail. The other one's led by him. Maybe there's a sort of overall bandit king somewhere who's actually the one in charge. Sly George and Abigail and others are just working for him. That would be kind of interesting. I think you could easily do that. You have a sword of the forest. And again, I think this one is a great tonal fit. I've talked about it before in, in one of my adventures. The Festival of Ash is such a great idea. Um... Add tall water into your into your town. There's a festival happening there. Maybe it's an ongoing summer festival, and so it lasts a long time instead of just a few days of this adventure. And so the players can continually go back to tall water and have these events and games that they're doing. And then things go wrong, and they come back and forth, and they go back into Dolmenwood and do their own thing. I think you'd easily add this in and make this into a great location. Just take that map and add it somewhere into the region. Say, hey, this is the town of Tall Water. Great idea. Bound for the Bogwood. I've talked about this one. I, you know, I don't. I think uh, it was supposed to be finished a while back, and it never got finished. Um, after I released my review of it, uh, the creator reached out and said, "Hey, this is awesome. I'm I'm just about to finish it." And then it never, at least as far as I can tell, it never got updated. So I hope it eventually is done. Uh, but even as is, I think this is a great tonal fit with Dolmenwood, and I would add this in. Maybe add a swampy area to the south, um, and the Bogwood is there. And the players can go and investigate it. Really, really good, especially if you're starting a Dolmenwood campaign in the fall. This one feels very Halloween-y to me, and so I think it would be great. Bound for the Bog would highly recommend it. Three Goblin Markets. I mean, if you don't add this one into Dolmenwood, I don't know what you're doing. Three Goblin Markets is so excellent. Those Goblin Markets are so delightful, and you take those and you, you add them into Dolmenwood itself, and you just add a, an abandoned manor somewhere, an, an immovable monastery somewhere, you know, the Card Sharks campsite somewhere. Um, the Lair of the Beast somewhere, and the Dead Man's Glade somewhere. You just add a few locations into Dolmenwood, um, and you have this already here. Or you take this and put it in a nearby wood, again, like, you, you, like I was saying elsewhere. You can just have it be another location nearby, a region close enough that players can go to it. Three Goblin Markets is so good, and the goblins there, just take the goblins out. Even if you don't want to use this whole adventure, you don't want to use the region, just take the goblins, take the idea of these markets, and put them into Dolmenwood somewhere. So good. The things that they're selling, the things that they want to, they want to, to spend for them will, will fill your players with that fairy tale feeling. So, so good. So check out Three Goblin Markets. All right, we have Will Waking Willoughby Hall. I think this one's a great... You can put this as a location nearby. Now, this one, because of the time-sensitive nature of the adventure, because the giant is pressing, I don't know if this one's as good a fit. But I think in terms of the stuff happening, in terms of the tables you could run in here, the, the sort of funny events you could... The encounters, the creatures, the NPCs, I would say, again, the tone is right. So take some of these ideas, put them into the world. Maybe you don't have this adventure in the world. Maybe there's no giant necessarily. But I think it would be great to do. You know, on this note, I was thinking the other day, no one's done a really good, as far as I can tell, Jack and the Beanstalk adventure. I've never seen one. Never seen a good one. I've seen people try, but I've never seen a good one. I don't know why no one's done that. It seems like such a good idea, right? 
Uh, you have a cloud giant's castle, massive compared to the players. They have to make their way through the town, through the grounds. First, they have to climb up the, the vine, and maybe there's like a town halfway up, or maybe there's like a dungeon halfway up, a small dungeon. And then they get to the top, right? And then they're in this sort of cloud land, and then they they go into the, 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 the grounds of the castle, and it's this huge overgrown garden, or huge overgrown cloud garden, whatever you say, and then you go up to the castle itself, and it's a giant's castle, and they have to go through it and find the treasury, and there's traps and monsters that are huge, and maybe they have to, you know, deal with talking ants or talking spiders or some creatures that are more their size relatively. Um, I don't know. I just think that would be an amazing, amazing adventure, and no one's done it. I just have no idea why. I thought of it because, again, uh, Bronebreaker Tom is a cloud giant, and the three adventurers were raiding his castle, which was up in a cloud castle, before they fell down. So, yeah, anyway, total tangent. Willow, another good one. Willow is one that I've reviewed before. You guys should check it out. It's really funny. There's a town that's really depressed. There's all this stuff happening in the wood. But it's a great um, it's a great forest that you could use. Again, it's a great region. You could put it as, an, as a hex. You have the forest hex crawl here, but you could easily put these locations into Dolmenwood or, again, have a nearby forest. That's what I'm saying, really. Again, as, as I go through, I'm not pointing out that you guys should add all of these in. Otherwise, you're going to have, like, 50 little forests all near to Dolmenwood, all with their own town and weird thing happening. Right? But take a few and blend them together, the ones that stand out to you, the ones that make sense. And I think you'll have a very good region around Dolmenwood. Again, similar tonal fit. Or put it into Dolmenwood itself. The Haunted Hamlet and other hexes. Similarly, just a bunch of good locations, a bunch of things you can add into your world that have a sort of tonal, I think, vibe that works. Works really well. And one of the things I, I don't have on here, by the way, guys, is um, Neverland. The 5e micro, or the 5e setting. Um, I think that's a, a fantastic book for this, too, for Dolmenwood, because of the fairy section. There's an entire section in that book on the land of fairy and on locations there and also creatures, so I highly recommend you guys check that out. I really should have added that in, in fact. Um, yeah. Uh, Haunted Hamlet. Ford's Fairies. This is another one that I talked about before. I've reviewed this. This is a great bestiary inspired by the works, the artwork of Henry Justice Ford, and it's got a bunch of really cool art pieces and monsters that work with the sort of fairy tale vibe like uh, Azudem. Uh, the Aurora Child, the Black Pig. Black pigs are creatures enchanted by certain wood witches to care for their hovels and cook for them. Many adventurers, upon stumbling into a wood witch residence, are confounded to discover a pig in an apron, scurrying about cooking and cleaning. Pigs are intelligent but unable to communicate. However, they are obliged to be good hosts, effectively providing refreshments and preparing a meal for the uninvited guests. Many visitors are taken aback by this sorcery, but woe be to any who may kill a treasured black pig. All in the party will likely be cursed, and whoever dealt the killing blow will soon wake up in a porcine body wearing an apron. That's so good. Or the witch comes on board. The boarding witch. The Boogalnaz. The cabinet of the keeper. The cabinet of the Justicar. The uninvited fairy. The Carcinos. The chambermaid. A type of fairy native to all manner of pots, jars, and assorted earthenware containers. A chambermaiden typically takes the form of a beautiful woman a foot tall, wearing a gown of white, blue, or butterfly wing. Generally friendly, but very protective of her pots and the contents thereof. Chambermaidens greatly enjoy riddles and games, and so ask visitors to bring them obscure and obfuscated items for their help. What does the chambermaid desire? A befriended chambermaid can provide information about the dungeon, adjacent wilderness locations, enchantments, or local monsters, and may even share the contents of her pot. Breaking a chambermaiden's pot releases all of its contents at once and produces one very angry chambermaid. Curses will fly. <laughs> so good. So I highly recommend you guys check this one out, too. This is one that uh, is free. You guys can find this on DTRPG. Yeah, I'll put the links below to wherever you can get all of these. The next is the Beastie Almanac, Volume 1. This is Vindal the Vagabond's Beastly Almanac. This is much shorter. I really like this one. It has just a series of short monsters that all fit in tone with some funny... Um, again, some funny Dolmenwood stuff. You could have, you could imagine a uh, Vindal the Vagabond wandering around Dolmenwood, taking notes of the group of creatures he finds, like the Nettlehawks, the Dughors, the Norwogs, the Shrouded Watchers, the Pylops, right? Uh, what are these? I do not know. They are best to be avoided. You could even hand the players, like, pages from this and be like, yeah, you find this book with a bunch of these weird drawings, and this guy's like, yeah, no, these are real. And maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But I think Beastie Almanac Volume 1, I think it's a great little book you could add into the world. Vesin, Spirits and Monsters of Mythic Ukraine. This is one that I've talked about before. It's a free league workshop book. This is another monster manual. It's pay what you want, where the creatures in it are so flavorful, and it's much more Witcher-esque in that there are ways besides fighting them that deal with them. There are ways you can fight them, and the stats you'd have to adjust to any OSR game because they're particular to Vesin. But 
the ideas here are so good for creatures to add into your world, for fairy-ish creatures, folktale creatures. I highly recommend you guys check these this out. Um, I, again, I've done a review of it, so you can check out that whole review where I go through in more detail, but, but just the kinds of creatures you're dealing with are hyper-specific. So I would say put one, um, put one of these in the world as the only one. It's not a type of creature, it's a local folklore creature, and it's the only one the players have to deal with it, learn how to deal with it, and then move on. Maybe there are a handful of them, maybe they can go and do some research about this kind of thing, but make it more like The Witcher in that regard. I think it would really, really work. Two more. Forgotten Rites of the Moldering Dead, a source book for the dead and undead. I think this is a great book if you're going to add in undead into Dolmenwood, which, you know, kind of makes sense. There's some there's some undead uh, vibe here. Easily have some, some creepiness going on. And I think this is a great book for making your undead not just normal boring. If you're going to put undead into Dolmenwood, you got to make them interesting. And so this book has lots of ideas for how to do that, making them interesting and weird and different. Because if you just put in skeletons and zombies and ghouls into Dolmenwood as is, I think it's going to be a very different tone than if you make them interesting, unique, twist them in a bit of a fae or fairy way or an unusual way, and the players will recognize these aren't just D&D undead, they're special Dolmenwood undead. So a book like this will really help you do that. And then finally, A Book of Beasts, which is 56 monsters for Dungeon World, but again, you could use it for any game if you're using any game in the Dolman Wood campaign. And and the creatures in here are why I think you picked this, because they're all unique and weird. The incessants, the white cat of 100 paws, the final crane, mouth that goes on legs, the fell burr, the tusker, the rhyme drake, the angel of ice, the flurry worm, the snow creeper, the raven born, um, or caven born, I think it's R, raven born, the shale sentinel, the frostbiter, the owl bat, the lure light, demon's eye, prayer sparrow, that's so good, the prayer sparrow, the house hopper. And again, you have these creatures in there, you put them in the world, a monster manual for Dolmenwood, you, you add them into the additional, you know, on top of the monsters that Dolmenwood gives you, and Dolmenwood will be full of weird creatures their players have never encountered before in any other D&D game, which is exactly what you want. All right, so that was everything. That was all of the, of the different supplements that I was going to go through that I think would fit really, really well with Dolmenwood. If you guys know of any more, I don't usually do this, but I say put them in the comments because um, this is the sort of thing where I want to learn more. I want to know as I want to I want to get more books that deal with Dolmenwood. And I, again, I, I'm stupid. I'm probably going to add all of these into my world. I'll probably spend like six months before the books come out, the physical books come out, building a whole world using these locations and trying to blend them together as best I can and adding in creatures, creating my own bestiary with all of these monsters. I think I'm going to do it for Shadow Dark, probably, because that's the system that I know. Um, I might do it for Old School Essentials or for the Dolmenwood system. We'll see. But, um, yeah, I am really excited, <laughs> and I'm going to put all these books together. So if you guys know of any more, please let me know. All right, that's it, guys. I hope this has been interesting to you all, and I'll see you all in another video.